Hey everyone, this is Nitro. In this video, I am going to talk about how to build Luna. And Luna is just an incredible hero to use, both if you play the Princess Alliance faction, and even if you play Strategic Masters. Um, I should mention before I start is, as with any other hero, if you're going to use her, you absolutely need to get the double class master for her. And the reason for that is because her classes, the class mastery for every class, so here we go, Pegasus Lord, right, Bow Knight, and Pegasus Master, as well as Bow Master, they all increase her magic defense value. So it just really helps to have that double class mastery to give her some extra magic defense. In addition, if you have double, both class masteries, you can pick and choose whether you want to leave her as a bow master or as Pegasus master. It's generally recommended to leave her as bow master, but Pegasus master is actually an option if you so wish. All right, so first, let's talk about her talent. Her talent, wind protection, increases her magic defense, okay? And the percentage increase is 10% at three stars, 13% at four stars, 16% at 5 stars, and 20% at 6 stars. Okay. In addition, she also has an effect where friendly units within 2 blocks of her takes less magic damage. And this percentage goes from 15% at 3 stars, to 20% at 4 stars, to 25% at 5 stars, and it ends up at 30% at 6 stars. So, she reduces the magic damage that is taken for your allies, as well as increasing her own magic defense. So, it's just a great talent, incredibly useful, and you can always benefit from it, because most in a lot of fights you do face magic attacks. Alright, so that is her talent. Now, let's talk about her skill combinations, okay? And it's fairly straightforward. Um, if you're using Luna, like I am right now, where she is just only has Pegasus Master, so no runes into her Bow Knight class, then this is really the ideal skill setup for her. Her bread and butter skill, without doubt, is Wind Spiral. Because Wind Spiral replaces her attack with 1.5 times her own magic defense value. So magic defense gets buffed up a lot via talent and class masteries, and then yeah, you just re and then the total value of the magic defense multiplied by 1.5 becomes her attack, allowing her to do good damage even without a skill. Okay, so wind spiral absolutely required for your Luna. The next skill is if you're using Luna like I am again, uh, you would bring Gale because Gale gives her a 20% chance to act again, you know? If she gets a second act, she gets to attack twice, which is effectively two times damage, right? And then her third skill will depend on whether she is playing princess or strategic, okay? If she's playing princess, then without doubt you bring her faction buff because she definitely has the best princess faction buff where, it, where after the battle, if you've done damage to an enemy, you will deal 15% of the enemy's remaining hit points in fixed damage. Okay, This applies for AoE attacks, so if you have, let's say, uh, Lana or Shafa or Lifany or even uh, Shafaniel, their AoE attacks will also do that fixed damage addition. Okay, And it also kicks in just for regular single target strikes, so just an incredible faction buff. Okay. Um, now, if she's playing strategic masters, as a strategic masters, you will have Ulti Muller as the faction buffer, right? And in that case, you definitely won't bring the faction buff. So instead of the faction buff, what you'll probably bring is Raging Thunder, so that she has an attack skill. So she'll do 1.5 dam 1.5 times damage, take reduced damage from melee attacks, and then have a potential reactivation of a second attack with Gale. So this would be a Pegasus Knight version of Luna. Okay. If she has a weak point in this melee form, 
it would be that she doesn't have any kind of healing skill. For example, you know, if you bring up Leon, right, Chivalry will reinforce has reinforcements, which restores 20% of your unit's hit points. And then similarly, you know, Cherry has reinforcements. And also, even Ulte Muller has reinforcements as well. So that is the major weak point of using Luna as a melee attacker. Just so that you're aware. Nonetheless, she is still rock solid used this way. Now, if you do have her Bow Knight class unlocked, then the lack of reinforcements doesn't matter because she can do ranged attacks that way. And as Bow Knight, her skill set stays pretty much the same, right? If you're a princess faction, you'll bring faction buff, wind spiral, and then the third skill is the one that's up for uh, debate. Because you can either choose Gale for a chance to potentially act again, or you can choose Move Again, right? Move Again will increase your damage dealt by 10%, and if you have mobility remaining, you can move again after attacking. So that Move Again allows you to attack and retreat with a Bow Knight Luna, which can make sure she can be within the guard range of your tank, like Leaden. So that last skill, whether it's Move Again or Gale, is kind of up to you. All right, so that's the princess version of Luna. And if it's a strategist version of Luna with Bow Knight, then your skills will be, again, you remove uh, the faction buff. And then because you have two range, you won't bring uh, Raging Thunder, which only has one range. Instead, your choices there would be either move again, so you can attack and retreat, or snipe. So the ending skill setup would be Wind Spiral, uh, Gale, and move again, or Wind Spiral, Gale, and snipe. Or Wind Spiral, move again, and snipe. So three different options for your Luna. And it's up to you to pick which skill combination you would use. All right, so those are the skill combinations for Luna. And at this point, let's talk about her soldiers. Okay. So soldiers-wise, Luna, she actually has a pretty wide variation in soldiers. And it's up to you to pick which one you prefer. Okay. The first option is to bring is to use the standard Bolt Rangers okay, that she gets from the training ground. And the effect of Bolt Rangers is that when they're attacked at level 10, okay, so if they've been maxed out so that they're level 10, it, what it will do is, if attacked, when your hit point is above 50%, there will be a 100% chance to decrease damage taken by 50% before entering battle. So. Bolt Rangers will be great because if Luna ever gets targeted, it reduces the damage she takes by half, which can keep her alive. Okay. Um, another unit that she can use, but I personally don't recommend, would be Holy Pegasus. And again, at max level, just like Bolt Rangers, this will be when soldier hit points is above 50%, before attacking, you have a 100% chance to decrease damage taken by 50%. So there is a slight difference. Bolt Rangers is when you're attacked, and Holy Pegasus is when you're attacking. Okay. I personally don't think Holy Pegasus are a great unit unless you're using a Pegasus Master version of Luna. And even then, you would need to have Holy Pegasus at level 10, which is kind of hard. All right. The third version of the unit I would personally recommend is Griffin Knights. Because the Griffin Knight effect is when soldier hit points is above 80%, they get an attack and defense increase of a certain percentage. I believe at max level, it becomes 30% attack and 30% defense. So this just basically means that Pe Griffin Knights will hit quite hard, right? So that, and because Griffin Knights are flyers, they're general purpose with no strengths and, or weaknesses. So that's why I would recommend Griffin Knights. And the final unit that is recommended for Luna, but I strongly do not recommend, is the Heaven's Guard. 
Heaven's Guard have high attack, and the effect that they have is that soldier attack increases by a certain percentage with each block passed before attacking. And it caps out at 3 blocks. So right now, it increases by 7% with each block passed before attacking, which caps out at 21%. And my Heaven's Guard, I believe, are currently quite low level. Um, let me just bring them up. Yeah, they're only level 3, and it's already 7%. So at level 10, it's probably something like 15% and 45%, something like that, okay? So, yeah, at with 15%, with 45% more attack, it's the highest attack value that a soldier can get, which is why people recommend Heaven's Guard for Luna. However, my personal thought process is that the problem with Heaven's Guard is Heaven's Guard are cavalry units, and what that means is Luna does a uh, physical attack, so tanks will block Luna's attack. Heaven's Guard, being cavalry, would do reduced damage against tanks, so that's why I don't personally like Heaven's Guard very much, and even though they have higher attack than Griffins. And overall, my personal recommendation is use level 10 Griffins over level 10 Heaven's Guard. So yeah, so summed up, his Luna's best two units are Bolt Rangers and Griffin Knights. Okay, so now, at this point, let's talk about equipment, okay? And I pretty much have this final set of equipment for Luna, okay? You want, this is the ideal set for Luna if she is in her melee form, okay? You want Twilight Armor. Twilight Helmet, because they both increase defense and magic defense. And then the third item you want is Veil of Light, which gives more magic defense and gives her immunity to defense and magic defense reduction. Okay, So this is the three best items. For the weapon, the weapon you want, and I currently don't have it, is... Let me just bring it up in the gallery. It's a lance. And it is this lance right here, Cursed Lance, where when you're attacking, defense and magic defense is increased by a certain percentage. It's 3% at level 10, and I believe this caps out at 15% defense and magic defense increase. So that when you attack, you do extra damage due to the magic defense increase, and you get more defense, which makes you tankier. In addition to that, though, after battle, there's a per certain percentage chance to silence the enemy's active skills and prevent them from being healed, and this lasts one turn. So just an incredible, incredible lance for Luna. Alright, so that would be the ideal equipment setup for a Pegasus version of Luna. And if you're using the bow version of Luna, so Bowmaster, then you can use Twilight Armor and Twilight Helmet and Veil of Light. These are three great items. But you can also replace one of these with an Assault Armor or Assault Helmet. Okay, And the reason you can replace one of those is because Assault Armor and Assault Helmet, I don't, I've never kept a copy, but let me again just bring it up in the gallery, is that their effect is, oops, let me go into armor here and bring up the assault suit. There we go. So the assault suit is, when attacking, increases defense and magic defense by a certain percentage. At max level, this becomes 10% defense, 10% magic defense. Okay. And similarly for the helmet, assault helmet is, when attacking, increases defense and magic defense by 2%, capping out at 10%. Okay. So, the reason to use either of these ones, the Assault Suit or Assault Helmet, is because it gives an additional 2% magic defense increase as compared to Twilight Helmet or Twilight Armor. Okay? They also give a bit more, I think they also give 5% hit points, so there's a slight hit point boost as, as well as the increase. Now, is it worth that 2% extra magic defense is really the question. 
Uh, I personally prefer to have just general purpose set of Twilight Armor and Twilight Helmet, but those ones slightly edge it out for the Bow Knight Luna. Okay? And you should only use one of them. Because right now, there is a bug where Assault Suit and Assault Helm don't stack. If you use them both, you only get a 10% boost, not a 20% boost. So you should use one of the Assaults and then one of the Twilights if you're going for the optimized attack value. Otherwise, but I personally again recommend just Twilight Armor and Twilight Helmet because it's more general purpose, you will always have the defense and magic defense boost, and uh, and I think the 2% magic defense increase is just so minor, it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. Alright, so la then let's talk about the la final item for Luna, which is her weapon in her Bow Knight form. And the best weapon for Luna as a Bow Knight would be... Uller's Bow. Okay. And the reason Uller's, for Uller's Bow is very simple. Uller's Bow, it decreases your physical damage dealt by a certain percentage. At level 50, this goes down to 10%. So it goes from 20%, 18%, 16%, 14%, 12%, 10%. Okay. The most important thing though is that unit range is increased by 1. And this unit range affects both the hero as well as the soldiers. Okay? So Luna would go, for, as a bow knight, she would go from 2 range to 3. Okay? If she was using uh, bolt rangers, bolt rangers would also go to 3 range, which means you can attack at 3 range and not, get any, not take any retaliation damage at all. Okay? If you're using griffin knights, their Griffin Knights will go up to 2 range, okay? So Luna would have 3 range, Griffin Knight would have 2 range. So in that sense, she would be great for attacking targets at 2 range. But you will take retaliation damage from ranged attacks, so if you're attacking mages or archers, you will take damage in counter-attack. So just, just something to be aware of. Nonetheless, despite that, I still, f whether you choose Bolt Rangers or Griffin Knights is kind of up to you. I personally would recommend, of course, Griffin Knights simply because if you're free to play like me, right, you would definitely have your Flyer Training Ground upgraded or nearly fully upgraded, whereas Archers and Assassins Training Ground would be barely upgraded, right? In my case, one is level 16, one is level 12. So, huge difference there in the stats boosts, you know, like let's say, look over here, there's a 34% attack increase for flyers, but the archers and assassins only have 12%. So, there's just too much of a bit difference. So there we go. So that's why I recommend using griffin knights as opposed to bolt rangers in general, until you manage to upgrade your archer and assassin training ground fully. So that's pretty much everything I wanted to say. Uh, there's one thing you really do need to be aware of, though. If you're using an Uller's Bow with Griffin Knight Soldiers, Luna, your big, big vulnerability is actually auto-battling. Because in auto-battle, the units like to attack at maximum range. So Luna will always attack at 3 range, which means the Griffin Knights never actually participate in the fights. So if you ever auto-battle, switch her over to Bolt Rangers. Otherwise, use Griffin Knights for Luna. Alright, so we've talked about her equipment, Uller's Bow or Cursed Lance, and then, then my personal recommendation of Twilight Equipment and then Veil of Lights. And... Yeah, that's everything that I wanted to say about Luna. Oh, there is one final thing I should mention. Luna's Bonds, okay? Her Bond values for the Hero Boost is 10% hit points, 40% attack, which makes her very, very high attack. 10% defense, and then 40% magic defense. So, because it's not boosting hit points and defense, she is kind of a glass cannon when it comes to taking melee attacks, right? She has high magic defense, so she can tank magic attacks just fine. And she has high attack, so she hits hard. But hit points and defense, you know, increasing 10% means her soldiers don't tank hits very well. And the... Very, very last thing about Luna is she's actually has 
her heart bond available. And without her heart bond upgrade, right, she's actually very much a glass cannon. And she's a glass cannon just like Lana, right? Can't really survive melee attacks at all. She will definitely get one shotted. With heart bond at 10 out of 10, it gives additional hit points. And it's a, actually, heart bond at level 10 actually gives something a bit over. Uh, it's around 1300 hit points boost, right? And in addition, heart bond bo boosts defense and magic defense. So it's a critical bond for her because. Well, Heart Bond would boost her, her hit points, increasing her survivability dramatically, and increasing magic defense will increase the amount of physical damage she does. So if you use Luna, she is one of the targets, one of the characters you absolutely have to Heart Bond up to level 10 as soon as possible. In addition to that, I should mention the additional perks that she gets when it hits 4 and 7. Now, at level 10, every hero will get plus 5% stats. But at level 4, her increase is that when attacking, she'll take 10% less damage. And as a bow knight, when uh, unit hit points is below 70%, damage taken decreases by 10% after entering battle. So, to be honest, you know, this second, the bow knight version is kind of useless because having it's not that common for your soldiers to be below 70%. And if your soldiers are below 70%, you're generally one-shotted at that point. So, not a very useful uh, skill in her Bonite class, but very useful in her Pegasus Master class. At level 7, the Heart Bond will apply these effects. As Pegasus Master, when attacking with a melee attack, damage is increased by 10%. So, additional damage, always a big bonus. As Bone Knight, when attacked with a ranged attack and entering battle, damage dealt is increased by 10%. So it's a, when you're retaliating against an enemy, you'll do more damage. Again, not the greatest uh, bonus as Bowmaster, but useful nonetheless. So that covers everything I wanted to say about Luna. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you found this video useful. And on that note, Nitro out.